Hi, I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig, and today we're tearing into this heater. This is a Planer 44D-12. Now, hopefully you're not watching this video because you're having the same issues as me. Now, the reason I'm cleaning this is because there's something they don't tell you in the directions. This is an awesome heater. We were on a trip for the last four and a half weeks with it. However, unfortunately, it only worked for about 10 days. That's because the heater has a new function on it versus our old heater that we had. And you can set these really low, where before they only went to about 60 degrees and that's as low as you could get them and they always ran. Well, with the new function on them, you can set them to zero or I think it's one degree Celsius possibly. And what will happen is the heater, actually the fan will continue to run and continue to blow air out, but the heater stops putting fuel in and the flame burns out on it. You can also turn them down a lot lower. What they don't tell you is if you're using that function and you're running it really low, that the heater can build with soot. And what will eventually happen is the thing won't even light anymore. But out of the exhaust, it's just, it's billowing smoke. I mean, you can't even imagine how much smoke is coming out of this exhaust. So that's a problem I ran into. I emailed them, they got right back to me and said, you know, what it is is that it's built up with soot. If you run that low setting at the end of it, or if you're running it 24 seven, maybe every 12 hours, kick it up to the highest setting, the most heat output, and what that's gonna do, it's actually gonna burn all the soot that's been collecting in there, burn it off, and clean the heater. For some reason, they don't tell you that in the directions. I don't know why, but I've now told you, so hopefully this doesn't happen to you, and if it already has happened, we're gonna dig into this one, take it all apart, figure out how it comes apart and goes back together and get it all cleaned up. So, getting into pulling it apart. On the exterior of the heater, you have these four plastic clips and they actually just slide off the heater. I'm just using a flathead screwdriver and just prying those off to the side. With those four off, you now have your intake and your exhaust on the heater here. It actually just pops right off on the top and I'm gonna do it to this side also. Again, I'm just putting the screwdriver under there and popping it right off. Now, with all that off, this top cover should come off the heater. So here we have the insides. You see we have a control board right here. On this end, this is your fan and all it's doing is taking air from this direction pulling it through the entire heater and it's being expelled right here on your exhaust. This is where you'd have your heater duct mounted right here. Right here is the glow plug and then actually you can't really see it right here but down inside that's your fuel line coming in. So in this chamber here you have your glow plug and your fuel coming together and I think this is my problem area right here. This is the burning chamber. So basically what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a flame that is ignited and it's just gonna be burning inside of this chamber. This chamber is what gets extremely hot and produces all of the heat that comes out of this heater. You can see that all of these fins are gonna get hot and all this air is gonna push through all these fins, taking that hot air off of them and expelling it as your heated air into your camper or your trailer, or whatever you're mounting it into. So I'm gonna take the plastic and my mount off of the bottom so that I can really get to the inside of this thing. All right, on one of these, I actually had the entire stud pull out on me. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. It's nothing stripped or anything, it's just that the stud came out instead of the nut. I'll have to put that back together. All right, into the guts of this thing. If this is as dirty as I think it is, and if it's anything like what was coming out of my exhaust onto the ground, I think this is gonna be a really dirty job. Now that we have this apart, it's pretty easy to get to. We have actually some Torx screws that hold these two halves together. Looks like there's one, two, three, four, and five all together. You can already see, 
You can see this crap that's coming out of here. I better put some gloves on because I think it's about to get dirty. So these are a T25. Let's see if we can get them out. Doesn't seem like they're too tight. I'm working on the last one right now. Right when I broke it loose, I could see these two halves already wanting to split apart. So I don't think it's gonna be too terribly difficult to get them apart. You wanna be careful. Obviously, you don't want to rip any wires out. And you have wires on the top here. These look like they're probably, my guess is the heat sensor on it. And I'm just gonna mark, I doubt that it matters where these go back together, but if it does, I'm just putting a mark on one of the wires so that I put them back into the right spot. So I just pulled these two wires off. Again, just marking one of them, just so that I can personally put them back in the right spot so I don't mix anything up. And I'm just gonna feed them through like so. All right, this guy is definitely wanting to come apart. This white wire that's running right through here into my exhaust. I'm guessing that's a temperature sensor for the exhaust. So it looks like these two wires that I have, they're just held in with two set screws. So I'm just gonna loosen those and pull them out. This way, I can feed the wire under. And now, I believe I should be able to pull these two halves apart like so. I don't think that's what it's supposed to look like. You can see this piece here was inserted into this piece. Now there are grooves on the inside of this piece. So you can see inside of here, I have quite a lot of soot that has formed. Now my heater was still firing sometimes. Sometimes it wouldn't fire, other times it would. But the problem was, is that this exterior here was not getting hot. I wasn't putting out much heat and it was blowing out a lot of smoke, but it just wasn't getting hot. And the reason is because I couldn't really burn much of a flame in there with that much soot. And it wasn't, all that soot's not allowing any of this to heat up. So there's just a lot of issues going on inside this heater between that piece and this piece. There should be a flame that's burning inside of there. This needs a lot of attention right now. But really, it wasn't very difficult to get into. The most difficult part for me was just getting it back out of my floor. So I think I'm just gonna take a wire brush and clean, I mean, this stuff comes off pretty easily. There's just a lot of it. All right, we've spent some time cleaning this and you can see exactly what we got out of the heater. This would be why I wasn't getting any heat and why this guy was smoking as bad as it was. So again, if you guys have this heater, you have that function to run at a low setting, remember, kick it back up every once in a while or the inside of your heater is gonna unfortunately fill with soot. It's really not that big of a deal to pull it apart. A little bit of a pain in the ass, but it's not the end of the world. Like I said, it was five or six screws these two halves split. So now that it's clean, all I'm gonna do is put it back together the same way I pulled it apart. Just gonna put those screws back in, make sure that you hook up any wires that you had previously disconnected, and then I'm gonna throw mine right back into the floor where I had it mounted. Hopefully I won't ever have to do this again. I'm gonna start kicking my heat up every 12 hours if I'm running it at that low setting just to hopefully burn all this off. We're going out to Moab. I think the nights are gonna be cold. No, we'll see how it works. Check back, ask questions in the comments if you have any, and we'll get back to you again. This heater is made by Planer. It's the 44D-12. If you're ever wondering where we're at or what we're up to, make sure to follow us on Instagram and on Facebook at Adventure Rig, and subscribe to us if you're liking these videos here. Hopefully you're finding them useful. Maybe you watched this before you had this problem. That'd be awesome, because if it's after the problem, it's gonna be a little bit time consuming, but not the end of the world. Really, it's pretty basic. Thanks for watching. I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.